Hello everyone, P from 41 here and welcome to another messy workbench. This is not the same workbench, mind you. This is a different workbench. This is my electronics bench, but it's just as messy as the other one. So if nothing more, I am consistent. All right, so what's going on here is, as many of you may know, I work on arcade games and I actually own a few myself. Now I have a game that uh, I had to swap the TV out and it uses a projection, a rear projection TV in it and it failed, I had to swap it out. Well the new one uh, does not turn on automatically, it does not remember its last power state. Now this is a very common problem when trying to put TVs into arcade games. A lot of them don't remember the last power state. So basically you end up needing a main power uh, you end up needing to basically push a button to turn the TV on. I've seen some solutions, but uh, some of them I wasn't happy with, and some of them required you to use uh, some coding on a computer, which means they really are only it's really only an effective solution if you're running MAME that runs off of, off of a computer. This this game doesn't run off a computer, it, so I need a standalone solution and I couldn't really find any so I came up with one uh, so this is this is it not much to look at uh, it took way longer than you would think to uh, get this put together so anyway let's dive into how this works excuse me I have a schematic here that I drew up it's probably not perfect because I'm a little rusty on this but it is a schematic now I'm sure you probably can't see this that well move it up a little bit so I will go ahead and scan this image and it should have been showing on the screen a little bit already now. That way if you want to you can, I don't know, copy it uh, or be able to just read it, whatever. Okay, so the way this circuit operates is anytime the power light is off, it will wait about five seconds and then it will activate the power switch circuit. Uh, as soon as the power light comes on, power is killed to most of the circuit and it disengages the power switch circuit. If you were to replicate this as a human to mimic what this circuit does, it'd basically be like if you just wait five seconds, push the power button, and then that's it. Uh, it's very, very simple. So, we, uh, so first of all, let's talk about the power for this circuit. It uses five volts. Uh, I get that power straight off of the standby section of the power board in the uh, TV itself. So very easy, very reliable source. It ties into, the, for the controls, for interacting with the TV, it uses three wires. Uh, it ties into the power light and the power switch. So there's a board, it's about this big, uh, that used to be mounted in the front of the TV. It's got uh, a power indicator light power switch and then a whole bunch of other switches for controlling various functions of the TV. So here we have, uh, this is labeled control ground, the power switch and power light which we're tying into both share a ground. So we just use one wire and I called it control ground. This is our signal going out to the power switch circuit and then this is a signal coming in uh, from the LED. This is the power that's being sent to the LED. Uh, so there's a few different components of this circuit. We have over here is an LH1511B. This is a solid state, uh, normally closed relay. We have a 555 timer and then we just have a relay and some associated circuitry. So the 5 volt power comes in, comes in through this switch. This is a main power switch, this one right here. The only purpose of this is to allow me to kill power to this module if for whatever reason I feel the need to do so. So it comes in through that switch and then it immediately goes in to this relay. Now this relay is controlled directly by the power being sent to the power light so because it's normally closed anytime the power light is on uh, this is off. Anytime the power light is off this is on and sending power to the rest of the circuit. So from there the power is sent into this circuit and it comes over into the 555 timer. The 555 timer uh, provide, is set up to provide a five second delay before switching on the output. The output 
has a little LED. This is just an indicator that's tied to the output. And then it also goes to a transistor, which switches on a five volt relay, which completes the circuit to the power switch. So when this is in operation, you got your five volts coming through, power lights off. So it's sending power to the whole circuit. The 555 timer waits five seconds, then switches on the output. Our indicator LED comes on. It switches on the transistor, which switches on the relay, and the power switch is closed. Now, as soon as the power switch closes, or very, 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 very shortly after, the power light comes on. So when the power light comes on, the solid state relay switches off the power to the rest of the circuit. So the relay opens again, thereby disengaging the signal, or the, thereby, I'm sorry, I got mixed up thereby uh, disengaging the power switch circuit. So it, it's very simple, very effective. Now there's a few reasons I decided to do it this way. Um, first of all, this is the only component I actually bought. Everything else was scavenged. Um, this component, I chose this for a very specific reason. I wanted a normally closed relay, but I wanted a solid state run because I figured solid state would be more reliable than a traditional relay. It would also draw a lot less power, which is important because it's going to be activated pretty much any time the TV is on. This is the only resistor I'm going to mention. This is a 470 ohm. The power light on this particular TV um, puts a, is powered by about 2 volts, but this uh, solid state relay only wants to see about 1.45 max. So I found that a 470 drops the voltage and the current low enough so that it's not going to damage this component. <coughs> the reason I needed the delay, the reason I couldn't just have a relay to hold the power button down anytime the light was, uh, uh, was on is because at the very beginning when you plug this TV in, it goes through some kind of self-test this light will actually come on, stay on for a few seconds, blink once, and then go back off. It will completely ignore any uh, any kind of inputs during that period of time. It'll just ignore them. So if you hold the power button when you plug it in, it won't respond to it at all. So I needed the delay uh, in this circuit to mimic somebody pushing the power button, um, which does complicate a little bit, but it works and it, it's a fairly simple compact package it's a very small unit not going to take up a whole lot of space and it's reliable um, now I am going to take this uh, you notice there's a plug on here I don't have the corresponding plug here it's already installed in the TV um, but we're currently during current business hours and I'm not going to try to film while there's a million people in there and it's completely bonkers and loud um, so what I'm going to do is once we're closed and I get a chance I will take this in there install it in the TV and then I will show you how it works okay so we're after hours here everybody's gone home nice and quiet so I can get all this done now so this is the TV in the back of the cabinet now if it looks like this weird hodgepodge that's going on it's cuz it kind of is um, this is really kind of a Frankenstein uh, rear projection TV that we've got going on here but that's not really relevant to this video uh, at most all you need to know about the TV is that uh, the main board is a Mitsubishi WS48413 but really you can apply this to most TVs so even that's not the most necessary information so I put my circuit into this little box. This is pretty much the best solution I could come up with uh, from Home Depot because I didn't want to wait for something to get shipped to me. And then I just have it kind of sitting here so that uh, I can test it and demonstrate it. So we'll talk about the wiring now, which is the important part. So this connect this uh, wire right here, this is actually going to that main power panel I mentioned earlier. Uh, you see right here, just like I said, it's got the power light and then a bunch of various switches for various functions of the TV. I was going to tie into this board right here on the back at first, um, but what I found is that 
um, the two functions I need to tie into actually have their own wires. So what that means is that I don't have to tie into it at that board. So instead what I did is this wire comes up back here and it's a bit hard to see. Get a light in here. So you can kind of see it in there. Um, this harness goes right to the main board. And so what I did is I basically just tied into the three wires that I needed there to uh, get the signals for a ground and the power switch and power light. Uh, and I tied in uh, close to the connector. That way I can just leave, uh, that way I can leave this wire and uh, board unmodified and I can just go ahead and put it anywhere I want. I don't have to worry about another cable being connected to it and limiting it. And then over here, these two wires right here, uh, you can see the harness that comes from the module. This is the plug I've added. It might be a little hard to distinguish because I've actually tucked it in here along with a bunch of other wires into this bundle. But these two wires here, these are the power wires and you can see they run over here and then they run uh, through a gap in the uh, chassis and then underneath and they connect to a 5 volt standby. They connect to a 5 volt standby uh, power source and then a ground plane. This is the uh, main power board so that's where it gets its power from. And that that's about does it for the wiring. So it's all set up here and I'm going to have to figure something out um, to hold this camera up. Uh, in order to avoid having to crank up the game a bunch of times, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the main power uh, to the TV straight into a plug. So we'll get this set up and I can plug that in and show you how it works. Okay, so I managed to find a cone to prop this up on. So what's going to happen now, I misspoke earlier when I talked about how this uh, LED reacts. Uh, it turns out it blinks a whole lot when you first turn it on. But the, the gist of it is the same. This LED, will, the TV won't respond while this LED is active at first. It has to have a delay uh, in order to function properly. So I'm going to plug this in. What's going to happen is it's going to do that little self-test thing. The LED is going to blink a bit. And then after a delay, the uh, indicator LED will blink, you'll hear a click from the relay, uh, at which point the TV will power on. And there it goes. So that does it, a nice standalone uh, system to turn on TVs automatically for arcade games. Hopefully this uh, helps somebody out. If you've got any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments.